Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. In today's session, we are focusing on hip adduction. We'll break down the movement, explore its range of motion, examine all the muscles involved, and understand how they work together. If you need a refresher on the hip joint mechanics and movements, check out my previous video on hip flexion for an in-depth overview. So what is adduction? Adduction moves the lower limb towards the midline, aligning it with the body's symmetry plane. However, in the neutral standing position, the legs naturally touch each other, so there's not really a pure absolute adduction. To circumvent this and increase the range of motion, adduction is often paired with other movements. For example, here with hip extension, where the leg goes to the back, or when it's paired with flexion, the leg moves in front. Okay, let's move on and look at the muscles that make all of these movements and combinations happen. As we've already done in the past, we're going to separate them in primary movers, secondary movers, and stabilizers. The primary muscles responsible for hip adduction are the adductor magnus, the adductor brevis, the adductor longus, the pectineus, and the gracilis. These muscles originate from the pelvis and attach along the femur, spanning nearly the entire length of the thigh. Their powerful positioning allows them to generate significant force, effectively pulling the leg or thigh towards the body's midline. This arrangement ensures smooth, stable movements, enhancing balance and coordination when bringing the legs together. During a classic hip adduction movement, like the one you see here with a resistance band, the adductor longus and adductor brevis initiate the motion. The adductor magnus, being the largest of the adductor group, does most of the heavy lifting. The pectineus and cratilis assist and ensure smooth and controlled movement. Let's move on and check out the secondary muscles that also assist this movement. Depending on the source you are reading, you will find different muscles listed. Here are the ones that made sense to me. Starting with the deep hip rotator muscles that we've already discussed in previous episodes, it's the piriformis, the obturator internus and externus, the quadratus femoris, and the gamma superior and inferior. Usually, these muscles handle hip rotation, but they also play their part in hip adduction and help to stabilize and control. In this context, we also have to mention the lower fibers of the gluteus maximus. Although the gluteus maximus is mainly responsible for hip extension, it provides valuable support during adduction, especially when the hip is in a flexed position. Some sources also mention the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, and the long head of the biceps femoris as contributors to hip adduction. But let's make this more practical. Let's try the exercise shown here, or you can also stay seated. Either way, squeeze a ball or a pillow between your bent knees. Feel the muscles we've discussed in action. This exercise will help you understand what's actually going on within your body making it easier to visualize and memorize the underlying anatomy. After this very hard workout, let's also learn about the stabilizer muscles. If you watched my video about hip abduction, you already know them. It's the gluteus medius and minimus. They help to stabilize the pelvis, especially during single leg exercises or movements that require lateral stability. For this very reason, they are also much needed for controlling hip abduction. Okay, I think that's all I have for you for today. I hope you like this exploration of hip adduction. Remember, the key to mastering anatomy is not just memorizing facts, but also feeling and visualizing how our body moves. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please like it, share it, and subscribe for more in-depth anatomy lessons. And feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I see in the next video where we will talk about internal hip rotation. Have a good one.